Hello. Hello, and welcome to the 100th episode of the Farm Traveler podcast. This is phenomenal. This is amazing. This is, as I've said a hundred times, over probably over a thousand times now, this is really cool. I cannot believe it. We've made it to 100 episodes. Thank you all so much for listening. Um, I thought it would be really neat to celebrate the 100th episode as doing like a quick little Q&A. So if you're listening on the podcast or if you're watching here on YouTube, thanks for joining us. And thank you so much for helping us get to 100 episodes. If you're on YouTube, you might notice the um, the live on air sign that my parents got me. And you've probably seen it on Instagram or Facebook or wherever. It's really neat. It's like they got it for me for my 30th birthday. So it makes the whole office now seem like a legit recording area for, you know, a hundred other episodes. So it's been about two and a half years, three seasons, and we've gotten to a hundred episodes of the Farm Traveler podcast. We've interviewed people all across Florida, all across the United States, Canada, Saudi Arabia, Australia, um, England, which is so neat. So I've got a lot of really cool perspectives from around, from people around the country, around the world, because you know, agriculture, you think is just cows, sows, and plows. But interviewing all those people, I really learned that, you know, it's a lot more than just farmers out in the crops or tending their fields. It's people in laboratories. It's people across the world doing all they can to grow the safest, most abundant food supply the world's ever known. So, yeah, I've learned a lot. It's been a super fun experience. And we will dive in to the questions that you guys submitted got a bunch on farm or um got a bunch on facebook instagram all that good stuff so i'm gonna go through them in order kind of so first question i got which <laughs> this was from Allie, and she kind of knows the story about this but the question was why did you start farm traveler great question so as some of you know i taught high school ag for two years And that was phenomenal. I was super active in FFA in high school and in college. And I was fortunate enough to be involved as a state officer here in Florida. And I really liked agriculture. And of course, that's why I did Ag Ed as my degree and taught for two years. But then I was like, you know what? I kind of want to do something else. I got burnt out really quick by like all the responsibilities of being an ag teacher. And so I went and did software developing did that, loved it, that was really cool, but I really miss being an active part of the ag industry. You know, like learning what's going on, how is the industry changing and all that stuff. And we started watching, this is where you've probably heard the stories before, uh, we started watching Booze Traveler on Travel Channel, you know, Jack Maxwell on the show, great guy. He travels around the country, around the world, seeing what's going on in the spirits and alcohol um, industries. And I was like, you know what, what if I did that but for agriculture? So started Farm Traveler, started the blog, started the website, um, (laughs) thefarmtraveler.com, quick little plug. Um, And then podcast started booming about three years ago, and there's such a low barrier for entry. I was like, hey, let's start a podcast. So started it, would get maybe five, ten downloads the first few months, and then it skyrocketed. There was one month, I think about a year after we started, where we got, I think, a thousand downloads in a week, which is phenomenal. And then it trickled back down, and now we're getting like around, you know, three years into it, we're getting around 350 to 450 downloads a week. It just kind of fluctuates, which if you saw my post, um, I don't know if you can see this correctly on YouTube, but that puts us in the top point. 37% of all podcasts. I mean, there's about a million podcasts right now. And as of a few weeks ago, we were the 3,000th, 700th podcast, which now, um, looking at the stats from last week, we are like 4,000th. So the stats change a lot. So it's not really the most perfect metric to gauge by. Uh, But yeah, I thought that's really cool. So we've grown a lot. That's really why I started Farm Travel. I've learned a lot more than I thought I would Um, doing this podcast by interviewing people from England and learning more about what they're doing. Like Vine Farm Dairy, that's somebody I'll touch base in a minute. They had a milk vending machine, and that was like one of our first 20 episodes or something, and had no clue that people were doing something like that. And so it's been really neat to kind of see what's going on. All right, so great question. Thank you, Allie. Um, A question I get a couple 
well, quite frequently, is what do I edit with? So I have the Adobe Suite, and basically I edit the podcast with Adobe Audition, and it is the best tool out there for podcast editing. I started out with Audacity because it was free, and you can't be free, and it's still a really good tool. And so I use those two primarily. I haven't used Audacity in a while. And then for editing the videos, I do Adobe Premiere Pro, which is also a great editor. Uh, the next question, <laughs> who makes the best chocolate? This was from Deus from uh, Lava Loja, which you might remember. And Deus, I have to say Lava Loja makes the best chocolate. I mean, we had it. We had the cookies and cream chocolate. We had the dark chocolate, the semi-sweet. The dark, dark chocolate, I've never tasted anything like it. And I swear you could actually taste like the the lava a little bit. I know it sounds weird, but you just have to taste it. And that was some of the best chocolate. I, I think we, we've eaten it all. Yeah, you guys sent it, or Deus, you sent it a few months ago. Um, so we've eaten it all. It was absolutely delicious. I put a little bit on some um, dark chocolate espresso martinis that we made, and that was delicious. It was really cool, like a little... Um, chocolate shaving on top of it. So yeah, a little bougie, but it was still really good. It was delicious. Um, all right. Another one. I lost my notes. Here we are. Uh, what's the most unique value transition you've seen on a dairy farm? So that was a question on Instagram and going off of that, we'll go back to vine farm dairy, uh, which they have the milk vending machine, which I think is just the coolest idea, um, a dairy farm has had. I mean, instead of, you know, collecting the milk in a big old container, which they collected from all the cows, testing it and shipping it somewhere, which will then bottle it and sell it, they have a milk vending machine on site, which has the milk from their cows. And then people in their local village come up, they can either buy a glass jar or bring their own bottle and they can buy milk straight from the dairy. I mean, it's so fresh, it's local, you're saving with transportation costs, you're getting people to the farm and they can see exactly how their milk is made. I mean, that's a win-win. I thought that was super fun. And then I've seen, we've had a bunch of dairy farmers on the show and I've seen a lot of them have been starting over the past couple of years, their own creameries to make their own cheese or their own ice creams. And so that's been fun because as this whole foodie culture is slowly developing more and more, uh, people are wanting more locally produced cheese or milk or whatever. And so it's cool to see dairy farmers kind of take advantage of that and, you know, make their own cheese, make their own yogurt, make their own ice cream or whatever. So that's been fun to see. So great question over on Instagram. Um, the next one, what's the coolest thing about agriculture in five words or less? All right, this one's tricky. Um, ag is super duper diverse. There, that's five. How about that? Um, ag is super, super diverse. And I don't, I don't mean that in just in terms of people. I mean that in terms of like careers, because when it comes to agriculture, there are engineers, there are software developers, there are um, biologists, scientists, there are um, chemists. Every discipline you can think of, there is a spot in the agriculture industry for that discipline. And a lot of people think it's just farmers out in the field, and we've talked about that before. But there's so much science, there's so much data, there's so much diversity when it comes to agriculture. And I just think that's always super fun. Like um, our past episode with um, the CEO from, oh, I can't remember the name of it, Naeem, he had, he started like five or six Silicon Valley companies. And this new one, which is going to revolutionize grain management, is ag-based, obviously. And so it's so fun to hear about all the new tech companies that are starting out and kind of helping to develop ag or ha trying to help advance the ag industry. Uh, so yeah, it's super diverse. It's super duper duper um, amazing. I don't know. I, maybe I'll try to do super duper duper um, more than really cool in the next hundred episodes or so. All right, the next question. I know you love agriculture. Oh, this is from an old student of mine, Chris which, hey, Chris, uh, I know you love agriculture and all things involved, but what makes you stay motivated? Uh, dude, if I had a trick to staying motivated, I would let you know, because that's something that I really struggle with uh, daily in terms, of the in terms of the podcast and work and like exercising and stuff like that. Uh, one 
quote that always stands out to me is, motivation is like showering. It's recommended daily. And so I always think about that whenever I get in like a motivational slump or something. And so Chris, that's something I struggle with trying to stay motivated. I mean, with the podcast, like when it comes to the podcast, everybody wants to be the next Joe Rogan. And that's not always going to work. And I mean, where you get millions of downloads a week and you can sign like a $30 million uh, deal with Spotify. And I think, which Allie has really taught me um, how to do this. It's really just enjoying where you're at and enjoying the growth because we started out really small and now we've gotten a really good audience, really good following. And you can do like one of two things. You can either like focus on where you want to go or focus like where you've been, like how you've gotten to where you are. And I'm really bad at struggling and like talking about like, well, we're not here. We're not a thousand downloads a week, but hey, we're almost 500 downloads a week, which is phenomenal. I mean, that puts us in the top 0.37%. So I think just like kind of recognizing being grateful for where you are, which again, that's something I got to work on. So I think that's good advice. Um, And Chris, Chris was in a bunch of my classes in um, when I was teaching in Atlantic High School in Fort Orange. And there was an app that would like let you send text messages to students and let them know like what assignments are doing and stuff like that. And so I would have some FFA kids or ag kids like send me messages every now and then. And probably one of the funniest ones that Chris sent me, and I still have the screenshot. It was like, Mr. Williams, I almost fought a vegan. And I like bursted out laughing. Uh, and he told me this whole story about how he almost got in a fight with a vegan about ag and stuff like that. So I always thought that was like super funny. Um, but anyway, so yeah, great question, Chris. Hope you're doing good. Um, <laughs> I just messed up my hair horribly. But anyway. Um, All right, so next question. What does it take to start having chickens? This one is also from Allie. Uh, So we live in the city limits, and we've wanted chickens for a while. And so I looked up the regulations. Of course, it's going to differ per state, per town. So if you want chickens, you know, and and you're in the country, do whatever you want. But if you're in the city limits, you got to be a little bit more careful. And I saw that here in Panama City, you can have chickens in a residential area um you just have to get approval from your neighbors and i don't think we're gonna get approval from our neighbors because they don't seem like the ones that are gonna allow us to have chickens but yeah so fun little answer like what does it take to have chickens so ask your neighbors maybe one day we'll have some chickens i think sadie pup our dog would love chasing around chickens hopefully she wouldn't terrorize them terrorize them but yeah all right another one um, can I leave my eggs in the refrigerator? So I had to do a little bit of digging on this. Here in the U.S., um, commercially, we pick up chicken eggs, not <laughs> pick up chickens, we pick up chicken eggs, and then they'll wash them to get any bacteria or anything off of the eggs, and then they'll be refrigerated until you pick them up in the grocery store, and then you still have to keep them refrigerated. The reason being If those eggs are, if they're taken out and put at room temperature for a while, um, because they're cold, they'll start to um, condensate. And because they'll get some liquid around the outside of the eggs, that can actually grow bacteria. So that is why it's recommended to not leave your eggs out. But in in Europe, or if you're here in the U.S. and you have backyard chickens and you just take those eggs out, you don't have to wash them. And so therefore, since you don't wash them, you don't have to refrigerate them. So, boom. The only reason we do it here in the U.S. is because we wash those eggs. So if you have chickens and you don't have to wash them, don't put them in the fridge. I think they last like three to four weeks out on the counter or something. So that's pretty fun. Another good question. What is the difference between raw milk, sweetened condensed milk, and evaporated milk? All right. uh, This is only concerning cow milk. I I don't think that there's like oat sweetened condensed milk or um, um, cashew evaporated milk. I don't know. But anyway, so the difference, you know, raw milk, obviously straight from the cow. It's illegal to sell here in the U.S., I'm pretty sure, because it's not um, pasteurized, which means whenever we get milk, we pasteurize it, which means we heat it up really quickly to kill off any bacteria that might be in it, and then we cool it. And so that's pasteurization. And here in the U.S., we have homogenization, which means we shake up the milk really quickly and basically mix the milk solids with the milk fats. 
and so it makes it kind of like a, a little thicker. If you go over to Europe or somewhere where they don't do homogenization, you can see the milk fat separate from the rest of the milk. So that's something we do here. But anyway, um, evaporated milk or sweetened condensed milk is basically milk where a little bit of the water is taken out of and then sweetener is added. Evaporated milk, it's the same thing as sweetened condensed milk without the sweetener. So yeah, this is just uh, evapor evaporated milk and sweetened condensed milk are just milk without a certain amount of water. I think like 60% of the water is taken out of and then with sweetened condensed milk, it's added. So yeah, those are all the questions I had. Those were great questions. Thank you all for um, submitting those questions. Those was great. So again, uh, thank you so much for helping us get to 100 episodes. This has been a really cool thing to do. It's been a fun little hobby. We've had so many people share our posts on Facebook, Instagram, even on YouTube. Dozens, well, probably hundreds of people have commented. And we've got fans that, you know, have bought our t-shirts, our Farm Traveler t-shirts. If you want one, let me know. Email me, farmtravelerseries at gmail.com or just message me on Facebook or Instagram. We've had a bunch of people buy them. Mr. and Miss Warren, uh, my parents, Ben Hall and Jessica Hall, Matthew Warren, Allie has one, of course, my friend Max, uh, Jasmine, a bunch of cool, obviously a lot of my friends and family have bought them. Um, I'm not hating because I think it's phenomenal. My mom, every time we see her, she has on her farm traveler shirt and she's like, I gotta represent, which is great. So yeah, th thank you so much to all of our wonderful friends and family of this show. Uh, continue to share, continue to listen to our over 100 episodes of the Farm Traveler podcast, which is phenomenal. Here is to our next 100 episodes and whoever else we might interview. Here's hoping we get to interview <laughs> Kimball Musk one day. I want to try to also have on Chris Pratt because he has a farm. I love the chat with Chris Pratt. Um, so yeah, that's it. This is episode 100. Thank you so much for listening to these episodes. This has been so fun. Um, so yeah, if you're watching on our YouTube channel, thank you for coming into our office. If you're listening on the podcast, check out our YouTube channel. It's just YouTube slash Farm Traveler. So anyway, I will see you in the next episode, episode 101, which fun fact, that was the first locker I ever had in middle school, locker 101. Yeah, fun, fun fact of the day, I guess. All right, well, thank you for listening. We will see you next week. Have a great episode, or <laughs> have a great week, um, and thank you so much for listening to the Farm Traveler Podcast. Bye.